This is a story that comes from Greece, and it's called Mr. Semolina Semolinus. Long ago in Greece, there lived a princess. Her name was Areti, and she had many suitors, that is, people who wanted to marry her. But Areti did not want to marry any of them because she didn't like any of them. And so one day she decided that she would make a man. So she got three pounds of almonds, three pounds of sugar, and three pounds of semolina flour. She pounded the almonds. She mixed in the sugar and the semolina. She added a little bit of water. She kneaded it all together and she formed it into the shape of a man. For 40 days and 40 nights, Areti prayed for that man to come to life. And on the 40th day, he did. Well, she named him Mr. Semolina Semolinus. He was five times as handsome and 10 times as kind as any other man alive. And his name became known the world over. Now a queen from a distant country heard about Mr. Semolina Semolinus, and she decided she wanted to have him for herself. So she ordered that a golden galley be made, and a galley is a kind of boat, a golden galley with golden oars, and she set sail for Greece. Now, when she arrived in her golden galley in the city where Areti and Mr. Semolina Semolinus lived, the queen told her sailors, look for a man who is five times as handsome and 10 times as kind as anyone else, that's the one. Capture him. And the sailors said, yes, queen. Now when the people of Areti city heard that this golden galley had arrived, they were curious and many people went to the docks so that they could see it, including Mr. Semolina Semolinus. Well, as soon as the queen's sailors saw him, they knew immediately who he was. They seized him and they carried him back to the galley and the queen sailed back home with him. Meanwhile, poor Areti was waiting for Mr. Semolina Semolinus to come home. She waited and she waited. She got more and more worried. She asked people, do you know where Mr. Semolina Semolinus is? Have you seen him? And finally, someone who had been there told her what had happened. And Reddy was heartbroken. Well, what could she do? What did she do? She had three pairs of iron shoes made. She knew that iron shoes would not wear out quickly. She put on the first pair of iron shoes and she set out to find Mr. Semolina Semolinus. She traveled on and she traveled on. She took roads and she left roads. She traveled for so long that she wore out completely that first pair of iron shoes. Well, at that point, she was standing almost at the end of the earth. And there before her was a beautiful, glowing woman. It was the mother of the moon. And she said, why are you here, my child? And Aretti he said, oh, please, I'm looking for Mr. Semolina Semolinus. He is five times handsome and 10 times kind. Oh, I love him so. Have you seen him? And the mother of the moon said, no, I'm sorry. I haven't seen anyone like that. But wait until my son gets home at daybreak. He travels over the whole world. Maybe he has seen him. And so Areti waited. And when the moon came home, his mother asked him, have you seen Mr. Semolina Semolinus? This girl wants to know. She is looking for him. And the moon said, no, I'm sorry. I haven't seen him. But you know, you should go and talk to the sun. He is also a world traveler, and maybe he has seen him. Well, before Areti left, they gave her 
an almond. And they said, when you are in need, break it. So already took the almond and she put on the second pair of iron shoes. And she traveled on and she traveled on and she took roads and she left roads until she completely wore out the second pair of iron shoes. And now she was standing before a woman so dazzling that already had to shield her eyes. It was the mother of the sun. But the mother of the sun had not seen Mr. Semolina Semolinas either. Wait until nightfall, she said, when my son comes home. He travels everywhere. Maybe he has seen Mr. Semolina Semolinas. Well, when the son came home, Aretti knelt before him and she said, please, have you seen Mr. Semolina Semolinas? I must find him. And the son said, I'm sorry, my girl, I have not seen him. But why don't you go and ask the stars? There are many of them and they also travel. Maybe one of them knows something. And before Aretti left, the son and his mother gave her a walnut. When you are in need, break it. So Aretti took the walnut and she put on the third pair of iron shoes. And she traveled on and she traveled on and she took roads and she left roads until she had completely worn out the third pair of iron shoes. And now she was standing before a sparkling woman who of course was the mother of the stars. But this mother had not seen Mr. Semolina Semolinas either. And so Aretti waited until morning when the stars came home. And then she asked them, have you seen Mr. Semolina Semolinas? And the stars answer her one by one, no, no, I haven't seen him. No, sorry, I haven't seen him either. And then one small star spoke up and said, I've seen him. <gasps> really, said Aretti, oh, where? And the small star said, I saw him in a city where there are seven white houses and seven black towers. And there he is kept prisoner by a queen. She and her servants are with him all the time so that he can't leave and no one can take him. Well, the small star showed Aretti how to get to this place. And before she left, gave her a hazelnut. When you are in need, break it. So Aretti took the hazelnut and she traveled on and she traveled on in her bare feet. She took roads and she left roads until her feet were cracked and sore. But now she saw that she had come to the place that the small star had described. This was the city with seven white houses and seven black towers. And there, there was Mr. Semolina Semolinas. He did not see her. Now at first, Aretti did not know what to do. Her clothes were ragged, her feet were bare and cracked, and Mr. Semolina Semolinas was always surrounded by the queen's servants, so she couldn't speak to him. But then she thought to herself, maybe the almond and the walnut and the hazelnuts that the sun and the moon and the stars gave me, maybe they really can help. Now she went to the queen's servants and she said, please, could I stay here for a few days? I'll sleep anywhere, it doesn't matter. I'll even sleep in the goose house. And so the servants went to ask the queen. And when the queen heard what Aretti wanted, she said, sure, I suppose so. If this beggar girl wants to sleep in the goose house, she's welcome to sleep in the goose house. And so Aretti went to the goose house. Now, when she was alone there, she cracked open the almond and out of that almond came a beautiful golden spinning wheel that spun piles of gold. Now, when the queen's servants saw that spinning wheel, they went back and told the queen what they had seen and she wanted that spinning wheel for herself. And she said to her servants, go and tell that beggar girl to give us that spinning wheel. What does she need it for anyway? 
And so the servants went to a ready and they said, the queen wants that golden spinning wheel. What do you need it for anyway? And Aredi said, very well, if the queen wants it, she may have it. But in return, I want Mr. Semolina Semolinas to stay here for one night. The queen's servants went back and told the queen and she said, well, what harm could come to him? Certainly, that's fine. And so that night, the queen gave Mr. Semolina Semolinas a drink, and the drink had sleep in it. And as soon as he had tasted it, he fell down to the ground fast asleep and snoring. So the servants carried him to the goose house, and they laid him down on the floor before a ready, and they took the golden spinning wheel. And a ready knelt down next to him, and she said, what is wrong with you? Why don't you move? What's wrong? Didn't I make you? Didn't I pound the almonds and mix in the sugar and the semolina? Didn't I pray for 40 days and 40 nights for you to come alive? And now you won't even talk to me? But Mr. Semolina Semolina stayed asleep and snoring all night long. The next morning, the servants came and got him, and they brought him back to the queen, and the queen gave him another drink that woke him up, and he remembered nothing. Well, next, Aredi broke open the walnut, and out of the walnut came a silver hen with silver chicks. And when the queen heard about them, of course, she wanted them. And she sent her servants to talk to her ready. And she said, if she wants Mr. Semolinas again for a night, fine. What harm can come to him? And so everything happened just as before. The queen gave Mr. Semolinas Semolinas the drink. He fell fast asleep. The servants carried him to the goose house, laid him before Areti, took away the silver hen and chicks. And Aredi knelt before him and she cried and she said, Oh, Mr. Semolina, Semolinas, what's wrong? Why don't you wake up? Didn't I travel to the ends of the earth to find you? Didn't I wear out three pairs of iron shoes? But it was no use. Next day, the queen's servants brought him back to the queen. And again, he awoke and remembered nothing. Next, Aredi cracked open the hazelnut. And from the hazelnut came a bronze rose bush with bronze roses growing on it. And of course, when the queen heard about it, she had to have it for herself. And she said to her servants, you know what to do. So the servants went and told Aredi that the queen had to have the bronze rose bush. And if Aredi wanted to have Mr. Semolina Semolinas for a night again, she could. They told her that they would bring him later. Now, in a house that was next door to the goose house, there lived a tailor. He sewed clothes for the palace household, and he worked at night. But for the past couple of nights, he had not been able to get any work done because all he heard all night long was a ready crying and pleading with Mr. Semolina Semolinas to wake up. And the tailor could not stand it anymore. And so he went to find Mr. Semolina Semolinas. And he said, excuse me, my dear sir, I must ask you a question. Ask away, said Mr. Semolina Semolinas. The question is, my dear sir, where do you sleep at night? Well, I sleep in the palace, of course. Where else would I sleep? Well, the reason I ask, my dear sir, is that for the past two nights, I have not been able to get any work done because that beggar girl who is living in the goose house, all night long, she is crying and pleading and saying, oh, Mr. Semolina, Semolinas, why won't you wake up? I can't stand it anymore. When he heard that, Mr. Semolina Semolinas' heart skipped a beat 
this must be his beloved, come to find him. But to the tailor, he just said, I see. Thank you for the information and I'll see what can be done. Now that night when the queen gave Mr. Semolina Semolinas the drink, he only pretended to drink it. And he pretended to fall asleep snoring. And the servants carried him into the goose house and they laid him before Areti and they took the bronze rose bush with the bronze roses and Areti knelt before him and she got ready to start crying and pleading. And Mr. Semolina Semolinas' eyes popped open and he smiled at her and he said, dry your tears, my dear. And oh, Areti was so happy. And now Mr. Semolina Semolina seemed 10 times as handsome and 20 times as kind as any other man alive, because that's the way love is. And so Areti and Mr. Semolina Semolinas got on the horse that the queen had given him and they rode away. Next morning, when the queen's servants came to get Mr. Semolina Semolinas and found him gone, of course, they rushed back to tell the queen. Well, the queen was so upset, she screamed and she cried. And finally, she decided she would try making a man. And so she pounded the almonds and she mixed in the sugar and the semolina and she added the water and she formed it into the shape of a man. But she did not know how to bring that man to life. And after 40 days, he spoiled and they had to throw him away. He was only made of almonds and sugar and semolina after all. But as for Areti and Mr. Semolina Semolinas, they returned home to Greece and they lived happily ever after.